Hello everybody, Mr Facto to me. I'm on uh, I'm on part two of me actual box modification stroke prototype. I think I left you back in part one where I'd uh, just cut the actual box in half with the hacksaw, ready to machine the two halves up and bolt everything back together. Well, I've now got the completed actual boxers in front of you here and they're all finished. I've not actually shown you me doing the machining of those because as I was progressing, uh, I was playing it by ear most of the time and I kept changing things and, and, and altering things uh, to make things uh, better as I progressed along. So it's been a bit difficult to do to do that and show you exactly what I was doing. So. I thought I'd show you now the completed items and how I've done it and explain everything uh, in a bit more detail for anybody that might be interested. And the reason I'm making these split, I mean, I've not, I've not got no drawing, so I've, like I said, I'm playing, I've played it by ear, really. I've not seen any that's been done like this. I suppose there probably is some that's done like this, but I've not seen them. Uh, and I've got no drawing, so I'm hoping everything's going to be okay now. And the reason I'm doing it is once you get your your, your wheels on and, and all your linkages, if you've ever got to take your axle boxes off for any reason, to do any maintenance work or maybe rebush them or whatever, it means you're taking all wheels off, and I didn't think... I don't. I didn't think that was very good practice, eh? and uh, I like to keep things simple if I can. So I thought I'd do these split axle boxes. So I've got this one assembled now, and I've got one sp split in half to show you, and uh, they're all complete and they're all a nice fit now in my horn guides. And I've just got one other thing to do to these, and that's. Put that little chamfer on the uh, on the slots here. The little tapers that go down down each side of the slots. So the axle boxes have got a, a bit of give that way, and and can work independently on each wheel to give you that movement. So that's all I've got to do, really, and uh, to complete them, other than put my two holes in where my springs fit for my suspension. Right, so, like I said, I left you last time where I'd cut it in half, I think. So what I did then, I machined the two halves up, and bear in mind, this was all done after I'd drilled all the holes before I cut it. So we'll go, we'll go to holes first and cover them. I've used two BA cap head screws. That's all I had on stock. And they, be, they, they buried into the axle box so that they flush with the top. So what I did, before I sewn it, I set it up in my milling machine, or if you've not got a miller, in your milling attachment on your lathe. Found the centre of the axle box, the exact centre, then from each side I measured 0.531 thousandths to get my hole positions. Now that's, that's a little bit critical on my part because of my sizes, because where the slot is when it's machined in, and where the hole is, you've not got a, a lot of a room to play with and you don't want to be breaking through. So that's pretty critical, that. And once I'd got my position, I drilled through so that I was approximately um, three-eighths below the centre line. I drilled through the tapping size for 2BA which is 530 seconds diameter to the, to the depth. And then once I drilled it, I drilled my clearance 
for my tool BA, which is 3 sixteenths diameter to the halfway line. And then once that was done on both of them, I counterboard them for the head. And I've had to I've had to modify the heads on these. I couldn't use standard diameter heads because I've not got enough room for it for fear of it breaking through. So I machine the heads down to fifteen sixty four diameter, which in thousands is 0 0.234. And I counterboard for the head in the axle box to the depth of the head with a 6mm slot mill 6mm diameter slot mill which is 0 0.236 thousandths to give me a, a couple of thou clear for the head to go in and while I got that set up I decided in not to rely on the on the uh, 2BA screws for locating I decided to put two dowel holes in so I've put two dowel holes in uh, opposite corners diagonally and I come down a quarter of an inch from the centre of one hole and I drilled to, to approximately three sixteenths below centre below the centre line one eighth diameter then on the other side I did it the opposite way a quarter up one eighth three sixteenths below centre so when I'd done that, then I could saw it in half, which I did. Machine the two halves up, parallel and square. Bolted it all back together. Then I machined the slots in. Sorry, no, I didn't. I machined it to the outside dimensions, because I'd left a bit on, remember. So I've machined it to inch and five-eighths square. Then I turn it over and put the slots in so it fits in the horn guides. Those are three quarter wide by one eighth deep. Then when I got both those done, I turn it over, found, found my coordinates to get me dead centre and I drilled it five eighth diameter to uh, I did that in three stages. Then I took it out of my milling machine, into my forge or chucking my lathe, set it up with my DTI, and bored and reamed it three quarter diameter. And while I'd got that in the lathe, I decided to put a, an oil groove in, in the, dead in the centre, and that's an eighth wide by a 30 second deep, because my plan is when my axles are fitted, I'm going to drill up my axle to that point, put a cross hole in so I can feed the oil in from the end of my axles into the centre of the axle boxes. Right, so the dowel, once, once I'd got the eighth dowel hole drilled in, I split it, then I've opened them up to 5 30 seconds diameter by 3 16 deep. And by doing that, the dowel then don't drop through the one eighth hole, obviously, like that. Five thirty seconds dowels. And then I'll eventually blank those two holes off where I drill through to hide them. And then it all clips together on them dowels. Like so. And you're relying on the dowels now to, for alignment. Then uh, you can put your bolts in. Clamp it together. I 
and I will put a bit of thread lock on though on those when I finally fit them into it loco just for security and then blank them two holes off right so that's my axle boxes complete and then I've marked them up so I don't get them mixed up because there's going to be six of these when I've finished. I've put R3T, R3B, L3T, L3B. So that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? It's my right hand side, the third axle along from the front, and that's the top, and that's the bottom, and same with the left one. And then uh, I've made me a, a, a dummy axle up just to try it and that's a nice fit in the hole now so I can I can assemble it now to, to show you show you it fitted together before I assemble it I'll just show you it drawing if anybody's interested Uh, and uh, that's my sketch I did of the other part in part one. I think I've sh already shown you that when I were initially deciding on what to do. If you want to have a look at that, you'll have to pause it and uh, look at it at your leisure then. So I've, I've been through everything that's on that drawing. I've explained everything. So now the axle boxes, this is the left one. That's the top. And all the markings go to the inside. I can now fit them in now. And the right one, markings to inside. And then we can try actually. Now you've got to be you've got to be careful because you've got to be making these within a thousandth of an inch really tolerance, because if not, you're not going to get everything lining up properly. So it's it's pretty critical that the that you keep tight tolerances on them. Then you can slide axle in. like so and then my plan is to drill end of axle once I know the depth to go put a cross hole in to pick that oil groove up then I can just oil them put a, an oil nipple in and just oil them from outside rather than, rather than keep negotiating all the wheels to get to inside because boiler's going to be on top obviously and so it's going to make it easier, I think, that way. So that's that's a modification I've done from original drawings. And uh, I think I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. It's a nice sliding fit, or it will be once the oil's on. And I've just got my keeper plates to fit then underneath the axle box and uh, saw that screw off to an appropriate length and that's there to adjust adjust the height of the suspension once once it's all fitted so it'll just want that screw probably just cutting off I think that's they go that side there and they're there just to adjust the suspension then. Uh, I think that's everything. Right, I think that's everything. <sighs> so 
So that's it. My modification done, completed. So I'm going to continue now making these other four exactly the same. I think that's everything. Yeah. Right then, so uh, that's it then for now. Well, uh, I'll sign off for now then. And uh, if you've not seen me making this loco from scratch, take a look back at them. And I've also made boiler from scratch. And I'm only a beginner at this game, so I'm learning as I go along, really. And just passing any pointers on to people that might be out there in the same position as me. I know all you professionals out there will know all this, but I thought I'd do it from a, begin a beginner's perspective. So I'll sign off for now then, and uh, I'll catch you on my next video. So thanks for watching. Bye for now then.